hundred years ago, a lady journeyed from Spain to Mexico to the shores of Cavite, at the time the center of the flourishing galleon trade between Mexico and the Philippines, to become the virgin of solitude of Porta Vada and the patroness of Cavite, where she has since then become the object of homage and celebration. There is a lady who lives in Cavite City, whose fame was once great and who has been the refuge and strength of the Caviteños for 300 years. She is the Virgen de Soledad de Porta Vaga, Queen of Cavite, patroness of the once flourishing galleon trade that built the Spanish Empire. This week, Travel Time invites you to visit Cavite City, once called La Llave de Manila. Just an hour away from Manila via the coastal road, Cavite City is rich in history and steeped in tradition, surrounded almost completely by water and blessed continuously by breezes from the South China Sea. Come with us then to Cavite Puerto and join us in celebrating the glories of her virgin. of the bend, suggesting a fish hook or cavit. The Spaniards derived cavite from cavit, suggesting the hook-shaped contour of the land. The name cavite is linked to world history. The Spanish galleons sailed every July from here to Acapulco, Mexico, via the Great Circle route. They were built by the skilled hands in the Puerto de Cavite. The fame of the Caviteños as maritime vessel artisans lives to this day. Cavite City played a very important role in the sense that Cavite was the second capital of the Philippines during the Spanish regime. Uh -huh. In fact, it was the center of the Manila galleon trade. Uh -huh. uh, galleons were built and repaired in Cavite. Uh -huh. And uh, everybody that goes to Manila have first to... Uh, passed by Cavite. Why? Because uh, the waters of Cavite is, uh, was deeper than the, that of Manila. It was actually the present town of Cavite where the Spaniards first settled in 1571. They moved across the small Bacoor Bay to the other side where they discovered an ideal place for repair and construction of ships. It was called Puerto de Cavite. Cavite became known as Cavite Viejo. of invasion and raids led to the transformation of the puerto into a walled city. In 1590, they built the surrounding walls or murallas and Fuerte Guadalupe on the south side The 
port of San Felipe in 1595 and Porta Vaga in 1602. the Puerto's importance and the security it provided, convents and hospitals were erected within. Among the churches were the original Ermita of Porta Vaga. The San Pedro Parish Church, which was built in 1778 after the original Nipa and Bamboo Chapel was torn down, demolished during the Japanese War, and rebuilt from antique excavated stones recently. Today, only the ruins of the Belfry of Santa Monica remains as a mute witness and survivor of the massive destruction of the Japanese war. of grandiose Cavite have crumbled to the ground, and the little Spanish town of brick and stone has been shoved by the bulldozers of the post-war reconstruction. city is closely intertwined with the story of the Philippine Revolution against Spain. The 13 Martyrs Monument is located at the entrance of the Isthmus of Rosario in memory of the 13 Caviteños who were executed by musketry on September 12, 1896 for alleged conspiracy to overthrow the Spanish government. of Ladislao Diwa, one of the triumvirate and founders of the Katipunan. Diwa was one of the first members of La Liga Filipina, which was forced to discontinue when its founder was exiled to the Pitan. Being a graduate in theology and a lawyer at that, he finished his law in the University of Santo Tomas. It was in the campus of the university where he met Rizal and became a member of La Liga. Ah. And it was in the campus of the University of Santo Tomas where he met Bonifacio, ah. selling those prohibited writings. Okay. When he found out that Bonifacio is a brave man to be there in that place selling those papers, he befriended him. Uh -huh. To the extent that he got away from his lodging house, he went to live with Bonifacio in ah. Tondo. Okay. Uh, so how was the Katipunan founded? On the night of July 6th, when they were learned that Rizal is going on an exile, he wanted, he went to the North Harbor to convince him to escape, but he said, no, I won't, I don't like to sacrifice lives, especially my family. So he failed to convince him. In coming home from the North Harbor, he was living with the Bonifacios in Tondo. Bonifacio was still out selling those prohibited papers. 
the man he met in the house was Teodoro Plata, the brother-in-law, the husband of Espiridiona Bonifacio. Okay. He said, it's useless now, La Liga is gone, Rizal is going on exile. So it's time for us to start a new, the Pulan, a new society. Said. And that is the Katipunan. Then Plata said, Isali natin si Manong Andres. And my father said, The three of us, because it will be a triangle. So, Diwa, first triangle, the original triangle, Diwa, Confashi, Plata. K, K, K. Kataas sa asang kagalang-galang katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan. That was the name. So when Bonifacio came, he said, we will start a new association. That was the night of July 6 when Rizal left for the people. How was he as a father? He's the most wonderful father. Can you tell us some stories about him? Understanding, very intelligent, and if I were to have another father, I hope he will be my father, father again. Diwa was elected provincial governor of Cavite when Aguinaldo proclaimed the Republic of the Philippines in 1898. Today, Cavite Puerto is a city by the bay on its way to regaining its old glory. The old Fort San Felipe is now the station of the Philippine Navy. Sangli Point, so named because it was from this point that Limahong escaped, is also a station of the Philippine.